Kingdom living, the Bible's most abused verse, taken from Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 6. And you know, there, we live in a day where there are those who laugh and mock at the Bible. And they're the first to try to invoke this command that we find in chapter 7 about judge not that you be not judged. You, you, you can't never go through life in a position of being neutral. You can never go through life not determining what's right and what's wrong. So, you know, you just cannot live in a position of neutrality today and, and not they understand right and wrong. So there are times we, we have to make what we call judgment calls about our own behavior and sometimes about the behavior of others. So realizing, and I pray that we can help you with this study today that will bring some insight and knowledge from God's Word. Honestly, we do not like to be around critical people, do we? Amen. The rest of you must like being around critical people. But anyway, do you... Not really. Do you know anyone who is overly critical and overly negative? And I mean, they're kind of like they carry a plague. You know, you don't want to be around people that, that are that way because, you know, when you start talking to them, all you're going to hear is negativity, negativity, negativity. So you want to be around positive people. Right, church? Say amen. amen. So, you know, do you know sometimes, though your judgments can be wrong, because, let's face the fact, we're not God. He is. And sometimes our prognosis of some person is totally, absolutely wrong because we don't know all the facts. God always knows all the facts. Actually, we do not have to judge anything because God's already judged everything. So we don't have to be afraid to stand for what God says is right and for what God says is wrong. You need to take a stand on what you believe. We should stand against today the grain of what we call political correctness today that argues that all judgment is out of bounds. So the point of Matthew chapter 7 and 1, Jesus is using here a, a series of messages that he teaches and preaches about practical living that involves our lives every day. And, and I know we've dealt with a lot of issues and we still got more subjects to deal with. But all of these things are areas that we have to live with and learn to have God's victory through in whatever we're facing. So the point of Matthew chapter 7 and 1 is not that we should not judge altogether, but that when we do judge, that we make sure that we do it the right way. So that's important. Matthew 7 and 1 is less about what we do and more about how we do it. So there are two don'ts that we're going to look at, and one do today in Matthew 7, and uh, regarding judgment in, the, in those first verses that we're going to find. Let's look at the first thing today. Carnal judgment leads to condemnation, and that's exactly what Jesus is pointing out here. Jesus is saying don't judge others with a different standard than you judge yourself. You know, it's old well adage, don't do uh, what I do, but do what I say. And uh, maybe you grew up in that, in that situation sometimes in life. But understand this. Jesus is saying, don't live by one standard and judge people by another standard. It's all applicable in all situations. Matthew 7 and 1, a verse that is commonly used but not quite understood. Judge not that you be not judged. Now, Jesus clearly condemns judging others with a self-righteous attitude. you got to watch that. Because you know what? We're not, all, we're not all that in a bag of chips either, are we? So realizing that when you pass judgment on others, having a different standard uh, for them than you have, to, you have for yourself, uh, your, your judgment is out of bounds. In other words, the same judgment that you're judging others with, you've got to first look in the mirror and judge yourself with. So Matthew 7, 15 through 23, Jesus tells us who the false prophets are. And this is important because we just think, oh, this thing's just about judging. It's about determining false prophets. And it's about determining who's standing for the truth and who's not. And we got a lot today that don't stand for the truth of God's word. And so therefore, it's important that we pray for them. How can you know uh, who false prophets are if you never pass judgment? So you, you've got to make sure that we have 
pure motives today when we make judgments about other people. We've got to make sure that we have all the facts. So Jesus makes the point that we should never judge to condemn others. Because really, if you look at the reality of God's word, we all stand in condemnation without Christ. And it's only through Christ that our condemnation, thank God, is forgiven. And that our sins are forgiven. And we're declared righteous. I can't make myself righteous. But only the blood of Jesus can do that. And the walk in the relationship that I have with him. So we don't pass judgment for the purpose of hurting other people. Because if that is our motive, then our motive is wrong and we're sinning against that person. So God does not tolerate unmerciful, unlovingly attitudes that lead us to a judgmental spirit. This is a, there's a great difference between confronting sin with the purpose of restoration and, con and condemning people in order to rebel um, basically in their judgment. So, you know, our desire should be as Christians, is to be in a position of restoration in all, third, all areas of our life. And the Bible tells us to be at peace with all men. And so it's important today that, you know, we don't put on a black suit and have a gavel in our hand, I mean a black robe, and sit on a judgment bar. You know, the real judgment bar is right here called the Word of God. And this Word will judge you. But thank God that He is a merciful, forgiving and encouraging and restoring God. And so if we will go by what God's word says, thank God he can change our life. So he's not about confronting the act of judgment itself, but the attitude behind the judgment. He's saying you've got to watch your attitude behind the judgment that you are displaying. Therefore, it is permissible, here this, it is permissible to judge people's methods, but it's never appropriate today to judge a person's motive or the why behind their living the way they're living. You know, we know what the Word of God says, and I found the greatest thing, rather than trying to condemn a person, is to pray for a person. We can accomplish a whole lot more by talking to God about a person than talking about another person behind the back, right? So the only one that can condemn anyone actually is the Lord Jesus Christ because the Word calls Him the righteous judge. So judgment has been given to him. We should never judge with an agenda to condemn people because we don't always have, as I said before, all the facts. We don't know everything. Sometimes we think we do, but we don't. We don't know why a person is going through what they're going through or doing what they're doing. We don't understand that. So we're not in a position to make judgment with clarity and absoluteness today because we, too, have limitations and we don't understand. So before you pass judgment on another, make sure you have all the facts. So we're so eager to sometimes form an opinion. But we forget there's always something we don't know that changes the complexion. Just like you've seen the issues about people who were convicted of a particular uh, crime and, and maybe they didn't have all the facts that were necessary, but they had just enough to make a judgment call, and a person wound up going to jail or prison for a, a, a disclosed time. And then they come back later and found through DNA or through other process or something happened that they had not gathered all the facts, and that person was innocent, and they maybe spent years in prison, and then they found out that person had not committed that crime. I mean, that's a tragic loss, isn't it, of time for that person out of their life. You can't re recoup that. That's gone. So it's important that we have all the facts. So you, we've got to be careful how we form opinions today. When we condemn other people, we're taking, if you're not careful, you're taking the place of God. And if we know better than God, how can we then be in a position of judging anybody? God knows all people. As a matter of fact, God even knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So he goes beyond what you see on the surface, and he goes into the depths of the soul. Let's not forget John 5, 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That's why Jesus is called the righteous judge. Now only God knows enough to condemn a person, because God has all knowledge, infinite knowledge. He has 
omniscience as we know it, which means he possesses all knowledge and all wisdom of everything. So we are never to judge with the intention of condemning a person. Uh, let us keep in mind that God knows us better than we actually know ourselves. <laughs> because sometimes we see something in the mirror, but we kind of turn our head to it, don't we? Well, God sees it all. So we, we have limited knowledge, therefore we can't judge others and condemn them. Now, Jesus gives us a stronger word of caution here in verse 2 because he says, For with what judgment ye judge, now listen to this, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So God says, so let's, let's put it in common terms. What you dish out, you're going to have to take too. So there's, there's two lessons here that we've got to be cautious or careful when we do pass judgment upon a person. He is not saying to avoid making moral judgment, but there is a caution that we've got to remember when we do judge, and that is, is the standard that will be used basically against you in judgment. So the two lessons are these, and here they are. One, God will deal with you the same way that you will deal with others. That can be dangerous, can't it? <laughs> Sometimes we don't deal with people too graciously, too kindly, and too mercifully. If we're not careful, that thing's going to come right back on us. So God will deal with you the same way that you deal with other people. Second bullet, others will deal with you in the same manner the way that you deal with them. So, you know, you've got to be real careful here. I think the best thing to grasp and understand, understand in this is that God is a judge of all things. Let's just leave the judging into his hands. So let us not forget what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 14, 15. See, all this is interconnected, intertwined. He says, for if we, listen, this is important. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we've got to be careful of judgment, condemnation, and forgiveness. These are important. If they were not, God would not have put it in the Word, right? So whether it is forgiveness or judgment, God's standard, and that's what you've got to key on, is that He will hold us accountable to the same standard that we use to judge other people with. Now, when you misjudge, it it's always has a way of coming back and biting you, doesn't it? So we don't pray, Lord, judge me the way I judge other people. <laughs> I'm telling you, the best thing to do is not be in a position of being in judgment today. The best position is to pray for people. What if God treated you, think about this a minute, what would it be like if, if God treated you the way that you treated other people? might make us have a different look at it, right? What if God had the same compassion for you that you've got for other people? But preacher, they deserve what they got. They, I mean, they, they, wait a minute, friend. If we all got what we deserve, we'd all be going straight to hell. But God in his grace, mercy, and love, thank you, Jesus, for the cross of Calvary, where he said one of the seven sayings of the cross, Father, forgive them. Amen. So actually... It's not a what if. <laughs> when I ask those two questions, if you judge others harshly, it's going to bring harsh judgment back to you because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after what? That the judgment. So there's no escaping. There's no back doors out of it. There's no curtains to slide behind. Uh, God's going to, we're going to stand before him individually in judgment and we're going to give an account of our life. Also, the more you criticize other people, the more people, uh, the more critical people will become of you. <laughs> I tell you, man, it's not the way to live. The more judgment that we are on, that we place on others, the more judgment then that we'll find upon ourselves. So what you give to others is what you're going to receive. So it's far better to give as Jesus gives mercy, prayer, and encouragement today. Do you think people don't recognize your negativity? And brother, let me tell you, it's, this world is filled with it. 
Amen. The news media capitalizes on it. They tried to do it yesterday, even in our city here with President Trump coming to town. You've always got the knuckleheads out there, don't you? But, you know, people key on negativity. We look at today the God whom we serve. And we find that God is a God that uplifts and encourages and strengthens and blesses us. Amen. And so, therefore, it's a lot harder to be negative than it is to be positive. You have to work at being negative. If you just trust God and live His Word and His will and work in His kingdom, you're going to find that positivity just flows out of your life. It becomes a part of you. So remember today, the same spirit that you use with others is the same spirit others will use with you. So let me give you a bottom liner here, if you would. Carnal judgment leads to condemnation. Carnal judgment leads to condemnation. Carnal judgment leads to what? Condemnation. Second point. Careless judgment leads to compromise. So Jesus is saying, don't judge other people to justify the sin in your own life. This is going to be pretty interesting here because you can't fix everyone else's life. You really can't. And when you have that same junk going on in your own life. So honestly, before we start pinning the, what's that old saying, pinning the tail on the donkey? I mean, before we start putting it on people, maybe that was a game, wasn't it? But anyway... Whatever it was, uh, be careful before you start putting it on other people. You might already have some of that in your life too. And a lot of times what we're judging other people about and being critical of are the things that we're guilty of our own self. So what is it called, preacher? It's called, here's a better term, it's called shifting the blame. So let's go to Matthew 7, 3 and 4. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the being that is in thine own eye? So what are you saying? You got, you know, your brother's got a splinter and you got two by four. That, that's a good way to put it. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye. <laughs> Most people who are overly judgmental of others are typically trying to cover their own sin up in their own lives. That's right. They got stuff going on that they're trying to conceal, but I'm going to tell you, you can't conceal it from God. God sees all things and knows all things. So the easiest way to compromise is, is, is not by pulling people, you know, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself pulling people down all the time. But the easiest way to compromise is not by pulling people up, but by pulling other people down, and that's where, where we are. So, you know, you got to be careful. Sometimes, maybe that finger that you're pointing at others, there's several coming back at you. So if you're not careful, you will, be, you, will lead, you will be in a position to lead further and further away from God when you're trying to get a speck out of someone else's eye when, brother, you're sporting the two-by-four in your own eye. So what, what right do we have to point out honestly what what right do we have to point out somebody else's faults of others when we haven't even dealt with our own faults yet? So there's things lurking in our lives. Anybody in here sinless, totally, never committed a sin in your life? All right. My point then. I, I, I have learned this. The hypocritical are actually the hypercritical. The hypocritical are actually the hypercritical. Let me, say, let me show you why. Those who are the furthest from God are the most vocal in their criticism about those who are always trying to walk with God. I'm going to tell you, you start serving God, praying, coming to church, reading the Bible, witnessing to your neighbors, your friends, and your family. I'm going to tell you what, you're going to start being the talk of the town. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be in a positive way. Well, what is going on with so-and-so? I mean, who, why do they think they're holy than thou? They never said that. They're just living out the will of God. And so, if you're serving God then it's going to draw attention to yourself, and you're going to get more criticism, honestly. But listen, you've got to realize something here. You're not in this world to please others. You're in this world to please God. And when you witness, you're pleasing Him. Harry Truman said, I like this. And you know, Harry Truman had a reputation of being a, a tough egg. He says, what Peter says about Paul says more about Peter than Paul. <laughs> Amen. 
So careless judgment leads to compromise, and we need to take, literally, we need to take more time examining our lives to make sure that we are clean before the Lord because God sees our heart. You can conceal it from people, but you can never conceal it from God. Don't be guilty of putting out, uh, pulling, pointing out somebody else's fault when you refuse to deal with your own faults because we all have sins, right? We all have sins, right? We all have sins, right? Thank you. So Paul said it right in Romans 2 and 1. He says, therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whatsoever thou art, uh, what, whosoever thou art that judgeth. For wherein thou judgeth another, thou condemnest thyself. Hear that. For thou that judgeth dost, doest the same thing. So, I mean, Paul puts it pretty bluntly here, doesn't he? And if you're going to find out, you know, if you're going to find that speck in someone else's eye, you've, you've got to be looking for it, right? That means you've got to be looking for what's going on in a person's life. You have to look with intention to find that speck in another person's eye. So you are looking critically at that person's life, looking for the banana peeling that they stepped on. And so, therefore, it's a tough thing to be a speck inspector. <laughs> you consume a lot of time being an inspector when that's not what God's called you to be. God's called you to be a witness. Come on. So Jesus says, while we are looking for the speck in others' eye, we're walking around with a personal two-by-four hanging out of our own eye. That's pretty tough, isn't it? We will always find what you're looking for. You'll always find what you're looking for. So if you're looking for the flaws, let's, let's step inside the church here for a moment. If you step inside that church, you know, and you're looking for flaws and, and finding people with flaws, you know what? You're going to find them. You can look at me. I got flaws. Get the mirror out. You got them too. But we like to spend more time talking about others' flaws than praying about getting our lives right about our own flaws, right? So Jesus is saying... People, and let me tell you what, it's in every church. I've heard people say, well, I'm just looking for the perfect church. I said, for God, God forbid, don't go to another church because if you go there, it's probably going to be imperfect. You'll get that in a minute. <laughs> Churches, I don't care how big, I don't care how small. I don't care what denomination they are. All churches have flawed people in them. But praise God. We also have forgiven people in them too. So if you look for the best in people, you'll find that too. So I found, you know, it's better to look for the qualities in their life than looking for the negatives. So, you know, now Jesus is going to shift from the don'ts to the do's. And you said, thank God. So let's go to the third point. Careful judgment leads to correction. <laughs> Matthew 7 and 5. That hypocrite, you thought it was going to be good, didn't you? But anyway, <laughs> thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote in thy brother's eye. So he's saying, you better get your own act together before you're going out here trying to correct everybody else's. So God rejects sinful judgment, but God at times also respects spiritual judgment. God's word will give you spiritual insight, won't it? So there's, there's a wrong way to judge and there's a right way to judge. God's, God detests today judgment that condemn, condemns today, but God delights in judgment that corrects. You know, it's far better to lift someone up and encourage them than to push them further down. So we should never judge to hurt people. We should always judge be in a position to judge to be helpful to people, to encourage them and to show them. And the best example that we've got is how we're living every day. The, the, this is the goal of reconcilia reconciliating people to God and one another. And that's God's plan. It's not God's plan for us to be in a place, position of division in our life. It's God's plan that we be reconciled to Christ, to God, through Christ, and then reconcile one to another. But see, if you can't get that reconciliation right between you and God through Jesus, you can't never get the reconciliation right between you and others. So just being saved doesn't mean today everything's good. 
You've got you to be willing every day to examine your life. You've got to take a personal inventory of the do's and the don'ts of your life. You've got to look at where you are and what you're doing and ask God to use you mightily for his kingdom. So if you're judgmental to tear down, I'm going to tell you bluntly, you're not walking with God. You're walking in the carnal. You're walking in the flesh. You're walking in the way of the devil. And that's not God's plan for you. We're not to judge incorrectly, but we, sometimes we need to judge and to show the love of God. So Jesus is saying, we first deal with our own sin. So we've got to clean up our own lives first that we can then help, not, not condemn, but we are to help a brother and a sister deal with their sin and get victory. Amen. And that's what it's about. The best thing we can do for people, and I've said this a half a dozen times already, the best thing we can do for people is pray for people. But let me add another flavor to that. Not only do we to pray for people, but we need to also to love people and to love them. So there's a time to lovingly correct people, and God gives us a prescribed way in order to accomplish that. Galatians 6 and 1. Uh, Paul was writing to the church at Galatia, and he said this, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, so you've got to make sure that you're that, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, pardon me, restore, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So God said, you've got to do this with a humble spirit, with humility, and, and therefore, you, you've got to go and encourage a person, pray for a person, strengthen a person, not beat them up and not condemn them. More damage is done, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not on Facebook much, but I'm going to tell you, more damage is done in the name of Facebook than any other media source that there is out there today. I am convinced of that. And I'll just say this about that too. That's a coward's way of correction. Amen. Amen. If you can't face a person and resolve and talk about, then you need to, let's be blunt, keep your mouth shut. Amen. Correction comes through confrontation. Peace comes through confrontation. And if we could learn to use these tools that God has given us, whether it's Facebook or tweeting or Instagram or Telegram or whatever it is, I'm not saying that. <laughs> sure, he said, tell a woman. I'm not saying that. I'll tell you what's worse than that, tell a man. But anyway, <laughs> and the women say it. <laughs> the, you know, it's so important. There's so many forms of social media out there, media out there that is so damaging, destructive, and, and pulling people down and critical and, and throwing eggs at people and slandering people's character and all this stuff. Folks, come on. I mean, God, when you're doing that, you're not doing this. And the way you do this is to go and solve your problems and talk to people and pray and try to come to a place of restoration and reconciliation and be at peace with people today. So don't waste your time with people who are careless with spiritual things. I mean, today, stay focused upon what God has for you and what he wants to do. John 7, 24 says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous, but judge righteous judgment. A lot of times we judge people by appearance. They look a certain way, or they dress a certain way, or be it whatever. And I'm not going to get into all the, the little details of this, but we stereotype. It's called stereotyping people and we analyze people and we put them in little pigeonholes of what we think they are because they look a certain way. Folks, that's not the way God wants it to be. Because you know what? Sin stains us all, doesn't it? It really does. But God's a God of change. And, and we can help people and encourage people and see people change by having the right today attitude. You know, I've had people come in and brother, I tell you what, they didn't look too hot. They didn't smell too hot. But you know one thing they did need? They needed Jesus in the heart. And you love, you love them and you pray for them and you encourage them. And so you don't judge merely by what you see. You've got to judge based upon the righteousness of God's word. Let me hurry up here. Time's almost out. Make sure you judge. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Make sure that you judge the right way. Begin with yourself. Stay 
tuned to and stay true to God's precious word and lovingly try to be helpful to others. You ought to set that as your goal, not just for today, uh, this week. You know, say, well, it's Mother's Day. I'm going to be a nice person this week, today. No, you need to be a nice person every day. And you know what? You don't have to go out of your way. I, I contend this. If you want to be a nasty person and be a hateful person, you've got to go out of your way to do that. If you love the Lord and you love God and His Word and you're serving the Lord, I tell you, being nice and being helpful and being kind to people, it comes naturally. Amen. Now, you know and I know that some areas of the country, people are nicer than other areas of the country. And uh, when we lived up north in D.C., you know, I, I tell you, man, it, it looks like everybody's in a rush and nobody likes anybody. And, and then I went to Thailand, and then we were stationed in Florida. So I was just walking through Merritt Island Mall after we got there, and people smiling at you. Hi, how you doing? I thought, Cynthia, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> these people are too nice. This is ridiculous. But I found it was ridiculously good. Amen. And, and, and don't think, well, preaching an alien stereotype northerners as being, no. Not, I got great northern friends and great people that live up north, and there's nothing wrong with them. We all have different styles of, of life, and we've been brought up in different environments and so forth. But you know what? Beyond a lot of times that rough exterior, man, there's a heart that's just as true and loving as it can be. Amen. Truth, you know, friends, it will change your life. It's interesting that those who say that we should never judge are the ones that are in a position of having a judgmental spirit and belief and heart. When we get forced to judge, we have to do it and here's a key word, carefully. Judgment has to start individually with us. And folks, you've got to look at your own heart, your own life, and make sure you're right and clear and clean with God. Amen. We cannot evaluate others. We cannot evaluate others until we first evaluate ourselves. And you know what? I'm glad today we've got a God who makes no mistakes. I'm glad that we've got a God who forgives all of our blunders, sins, and just to use a word that folks don't like to use, he even forgives our stupidity. <laughs> today, I want, to, I want to challenge you to set your sights starting today to seek to be a more encouraging person. And, and start exhibiting what God has prescribed and declared in his word. We are to lift up. It's, life is hard enough as it is. And I found that if you will encourage and lift up people, it'll go a lot further. And you know what? I'll tell you what's really neat about this. I am blessed with a load of friends. I mean, they're all over the place. I've got them all over the world. And you know why? Because, friends, I've always tried to seek to be a friend and to love and to care for others. doesn't mean I'm perfect. I blow it too. But I found that if I will go in that area of my life and keep my life clean before God and seek to encourage and lift up others, it's going to bring a lot more positivity into my life and a lot more blessings from God. Amen. So learn to evaluate yourself and watch God do a mighty work in your life. And the church said amen. amen. Thank you, Father, for the season that we could open the pages of your word with honesty and sincerity and declare, thus saith the Lord. Now, we receive your word. Thank you for it. And, Lord, we now apply that word to our hearts and our lives and pray that you'll take that word and change us, mold us, shape us, fashion us, and use us mightily for your kingdom. We love you today. Thank you for this Mother's Day. Thank you for gracing us with a great blessing of Mother's Thank you for each lady, each godly lady that's here today. Thank you for every person, boys and girls and young people and men and women and every person. Thank you, Lord. And we're excited about what you're going to do in your house today. Have your will in your way and pour out your greatest blessings upon your people here is my prayer. And we'll give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' name. All God's servants say it first. Amen. Amen. Now put your hands together and give the Lord a praise offering because he's a worthy God. Amen. <laughs>